Okay, so we've got all the chat showing up. All right, primary stream status is bad, but it was doing that yesterday when we first started as well. And it improved after like a minute. We're live. Oh, awesome. Yeah. So we're going to get started in a couple minutes here, guys. We're just going to wait so everyone who shows up right at 4. the new competition for this alone live. Yeah. So guys, we are waiting just a couple minutes here. Uh, get to four o'clock, let everybody join us. Um, I'm gonna turn my audio off. <laughs> but if uh, um, you are with us already at waltonsinc.com slash live or on our Meetgistics site, um, there's a live watch page there as well. Um, you can enter the um, Walton's Ultimate Knife Set Kit. We are turning that live in just one yep. second here. Um, that will be only for those that are um, watching and with us now. We're going to start it in just one minute here, and that giveaway will end when um, our live stream ends. Um, so better chances on this giveaway than any of our other gi giveaways. Um, Absolutely. Definitely, if you're watching on YouTube, head over to waltonsinc.com live and check out the giveaway entry there. Yeah, so this is going to be uh, the giveaway that was from not this past month, but the month before that. We've got the collection of all the Victrinox knives. Uh, you're going to get some knives that are great for both processing and just cooking at your house. You're going to get a full set of knives. Most of them are eight inches. There is one uh, six inch boning knife. Uh, most important knife in here, though, is this butcher's knife. It is just <laughs> awesome looking. Uh, most people probably won't ever use it for what it's actually used for, but I mean, it just looks great. All right, we're also going to give you an eight inch chef's knife, which will be very useful. A set of four of the steak knives. We're going to give you uh, a chef's choice 120 sharpener, so you can keep those all nice and sharp. And depending on who wins, if you want to wait, we are getting new hats and new shirts coming in soon. So if whoever wants to win this, wants to wait just a couple of days for us to ship it out, I'll throw in a new hat and a shirt. Um, just let you choose. Or how are we going to do that? Are we going to let them choose or are we going to assign? Because we're getting three or four different hats. Three different hats. No, four hats. Four hats. Four hats and... Uh, two shirts. Two shirts. Um, and to uh, address some of the complaints from last time, no. we are getting more sizes. Yep. Um, we had limited numbers of sizes before. Um, this time we've got a lot more size options. Yep. Um, uh, but yeah, so we'll have like a burnt orange shirt and the same as this basically. Uh, and a little bit different material. It's like a dry fit. So it might fit a little bit different, but I've tried on a sample of the shirt. It's real comfy. Yeah. So they're like the moisture wicking stuff. Yeah. I like that. Yeah. All right. So that is 401. Uh, we will just officially start, I guess. So a couple of quick, just um, not even housekeeping things, but before we get to drawing for April's winner, I want to quickly go over what we're going to be giving away for May. We're going to go ahead and go back to kind of what we've We've gone kind of grills and kitchen things. Um, at heart, obviously, we're a meat processing company, and we're going to go back to our roots just a little bit. We're going to be giving away a Butcher Series Weston grinder. It's a great little grinder. We love these Butcher Series. Uh, powerful. It's got a permanently lubricated engine, or engine, motor. <laughs> <laughs> so you're never going to have to just stop it and let it cool down. It can run for long periods of time. Uh, capable of grinding up to four to six pounds per minute under ideal uh, conditions. It's got uh, all sorts of adapters. You can stuff off of it. We don't necessarily recommend that. Better to pick up a stuffer, but it can do it in a pinch. Uh, we're also going to include uh, a collection of our favorite seasoning shakers. This is just a few of them. It's not all of them. Uh, and then uh, a shirt and hat. So total value on that is over $415. Um, so whoever wins that, going to be 
real happy with, with what they have. Yeah, for sure. Um, I have not even glanced at chats yet. We got a lot of chats coming in. Um, if you got anything to say, just want to say hey, or, or if you got a question, um, start leaving questions in the chats. Um, as we go through the live stream, uh, we'll, st we'll start answering everybody's questions. Um, so if you got anything related to meat, food, cooking, uh, sausage making, um, ask away and we'll answer everything we can. Yeah, life advice probably not the right group for, well, you might give some good life advice. We could give life advice. I don't know if they should take it, <laughs> but <laughs> Fair we, can, enough. we can give it. Fair enough. Uh, so the knives, uh, Stevie B just asked, how do we get in on the knives? Um, right to, if you're on waltonsinc.com slash live, right to the side of our, you know, the video player, uh, there is a, a little thing that you can enter. There's two ways to enter. You can sign up for the newsletter. And if they're already signed up, they still clicking that button gives it to them, yes, right? It just yes. verifies that you're signed up. Um, and then below is refer a friend for extra entry. You just click on those and it'll walk you through how to do them. That's going to go on the entire time we're doing this. Uh, at the very end, excuse me, at the very end of our live stream, we'll draw that winner. So everyone who's able to come in at some point will uh, have a chance to win. Um, I, I know at least one person, uh, Jerry won't be joining us till 4.15, but he'll be in here. Okay. Uh, um, are we good to turn the giveaway live? Which giveaway? Or do I have? Which yeah. giveaway? This yeah, giveaway that is one. live. No. Uh, <laughs> 31 hours to, until open. I hit save. Well, now it says 115 minutes left. Um, right. Yeah. Wait, left to enter? Sorry, I'm reading that wrong. Yeah. Okay, yeah. we're good. No, so the giveaway is live. You Sorry, guys can guys. start entering now on that. Um, but that's the second thing. You, you probably haven't hit yeah, refresh we're good. on the page. Yeah. No, there we go. Yeah, we got a bunch of people already in there. Good. I, yeah, I need to refresh. We're, we're good. Okay, good, good. Uh, we've got close to 200 people on nice. already. Um, Nice. We did do a, a lot better job of promoting this one, I'd say. I've been reminding a lot, a lot of people on social media, did a couple posts there, did a, or an email a reasonable amount of time before, not just sabotage them with five minutes left so people could plan for it a little bit maybe. Um, and then obviously, I mean, your chance to win, this is going to be the best chance that you'll have up to this point at least for to win a prize. I mean, I'd imagine you'd be one out of just a couple of hundred versus this last girl we had, I think, 8,400. That was our second biggest giveaway as it far as number of people entered um, ever. The other Burrow King, which was smaller, like a smaller dollar amount, had more people enter, which confused us. I mean, not by much, it was just like 100 people, but still, that confused me. I thought this one would blow that one away. Um, so whoever wins that, I mean, the Regal S590 Pro is an awesome grill. It has it's amazing. everything you could possibly want. It sounds stupid, but the dials on the front light up. It looks great. I mean, it is one of those cool little things. And I don't know, Burrow King doesn't seem to get the recognition that at least I think they deserve as far as being a great grill. Um, everything we've had from them, tried from them, has been really nice, really well made. I don't know if it's because it's close to charbroil. And that's like the Walmart grill? Yeah, maybe? people, I think, associate it to that right. a little bit. And charbroil is like the uh, low end. Uh. But still works. Well, I'm sure we have some viewers who have it, who have a charbroil. No, nah, if you works. have a charbroil, you should buy, buy, <laughs> buy a bro king. Um, before we announce things, um, one of the most important questions I've seen come through so far uh, came from a friend of ours up in Minnesota. Uh, uh, Rob from <laughs> Ron Share Productions is watching. Uh, he's asking, what's going on with the Red Sox this year? I don't even know. Is, is that a dig at you? It is. It, good, it is. good. Thanks, Rob. I appreciate it. Anytime we can dig at John, I'm you all You can't in for win it. every year, and still, it's very early. I mean, really early. Let's calm down a little bit. I, I assume you're a Twins fan, so I don't know. I, I might watch my mouth a little bit talking smack, just a little. <laughs> Uh, and on sort of that same thing, um, for anyone who is in that area of Minnesota and northern states, uh, we actually started advertising on the Destination Polaris show. It's an awesome 
awesome show. I mean, they do tons of great adventures. They go to crazy wild places. Definitely worth watching. Um, and then if you watch it, you will see or hear some people that you're used to seeing from this channel. So, a little cool thing to do. Yeah, I guess while we're plugging, not only Destination Players, but um, yeah. also, also watch The Flush, uh -huh. uh, Rooster Tales, mm -hmm. Um, made for the outdoors, a um, bunch of shows that I think fit our audience very well. Right. Um, everybody out there I think would, would really enjoy them. Uh, those are shows we advertise on, um, watch them, uh, look for our commercial. You get special coupon codes on the commercials as well. Um, but the shows, uh, everything from Ron Scher, uh, they, they produce some great content there. Yeah, and not only our, our commercials, but we actually went up there about a year ago and shot a couple of segments with them on you know, how to make, I think we did jerky, I don't think we did snack sticks. We did a couple things, and they've run them from time to time. And, I mean, we think they did a great job with them. We had a lot of fun doing them. Yeah. So. All right. I will be right back, and then 10 minutes in, too early to draw the winner for April? I don't think so. No. I, I think, think uh, yeah, we, we give it about one more minute here, and we will draw, draw the winner. Um, We had one comment in here from Dance Dad that says, hey, let Austin talk more. <laughs> yep, Hope, I recognize your name from almost all of our other live streams. Okay. Uh, wait, wait, real quick before we do that. Jim, I see you. Any idea when smoky seasoning will be back in stock? I don't know if he means Little Smokies. Probably. Do we? Yeah. I didn't oh, know they were out of stock. Uh, Jim, just let us know what you meant by Smokey, and I'll look it up. All right, go ahead. You want to draw? No, go ahead. I drew the last one, I think. Okay. Uh, bum, bum, bum. Let's see. April giveaway, Broil King. Let's go to the winners, and let's draw. Just to remind everybody, we do not have any selection uh, yeah, sway totally on randomized. this, totally yeah. randomized. Um, we have a total of uh, about 114,000 entries. Um, so that's 114,000 entries. So if you entered like 35 times, yeah, he's counting use 35 there, not one. Yeah. So hopefully you've Don't got a lot of options. Um, picking one winner and draw. Okay. Let's see. We got somebody um, from Indiana. So if you, you did are, draw last time. Did you do <laughs> I this did. Last I did this too. last time. I just now remembered. So if you are not in Indiana, I'm sorry, but you are not the winner. Um, the winner is from Tell City, Indiana. We've got Sharon Speedy. So Sharon, if you are with us, uh, sound out in the comments. Uh, if not, we will send you an email um, to get your uh, mailing address. Um, We'll, we'll figure out uh, hats, um, shirts. Yep. Uh, if we get the new ones in, you can have your pick of uh, whatever the new stuff you want, and uh, we'll get that out to you as soon as possible. All you got to do is respond to our email, and we will send you the brand new Broil King Grill. But for everyone else, we are still going to give this away, <coughs> and then right after, well, actually probably tomorrow, we will have our new giveaway started for the Weston number eight butcher series. So <coughs> life goes on, you have more chances to win more things. Yeah, the good news is we do giveaways every month and we keep finding uh, other reasons to do some giveaways. So we have more than 12 in a year. We have multiple. Yep. Um, um, keep coming back, keep watching the live streams, keep uh, visiting waltonsinc.com slash win. We've got lots of chances to win. So if you don't win, don't get too disheartened. Yeah, I'll look at that later. I was going to look and see how many times she entered. Um, I don't know why that always interests me. It was <laughs> ent entry number 85,218. Yeah, so it was pretty late on. Nick Hall says, but you guys always say my name wrong. As in saying he always wins when we <laughs> say it wrong. <laughs> Let's see. Uh, Sharon only had 11 entries. Oh, wow. So, yeah. That's a...
Well, somebody's got to win. Um, so we already have uh, 166 users in the giveaway for the knives. I mean, that's fairly good odds for a giveaway like this. And do we, we don't want to do anything where you have, do you want to do you have to be present to win? No. I don't think we can. Okay. Legally? Legally, I don't know if okay. we can. Well, we'll look into that, maybe do something on the next live stream. We, yeah. We could do something maybe over like a few minute period, whoever comments. Um, I don't know. Okay. We'll have well, to look and we'll see how, how that we'll can We'll look work. at some other options. Um, and then as far as, so that's the giveaway for May. The sale for May is going to be 10% off of everything in the barbecue accessories category. So how you would look at that is you'd go to waltonsinc.com, go to smoking and grilling on the headers, and then the first one there is barbecue accessories. So you can get tons of things at 10% off. Uh, one of my favorites, and as it's getting up on grilling season, is the 18-piece barbecue kit. You get all sorts of great things in here. And at 10% off, I think it's like $25 or something right around there. Absolutely worth going. And you get that cool case so everything stays nice and organized. Do we want to start running through some questions? Sure. Um, the first one, I think, is directed at you. Uh, Lucinda is asking for dating tips. <laughs> I saw that right after we said life advice. Yeah, just. Honestly, uh, it's a joke, but find someone you actually like being around, not that you're just attracted to. That would be my number one advice, because that stuff fades. So just make sure that whoever you end up with is as much of a friend as anything else. Um, how do you pick out good steak knives? Hmm. Honestly, I don't Brand know name? if I've ever been asked that before. One of the things you want to look for is you want the tang most of the way down through the handle, if not the entire way down through the handle, but that's just like a general knife, not just steak knives. Um, it sounds weird to say because I'm not a big brand name guy, but with things like knives, looking at the brand name matters. It's going to mean that not only were they made with higher made material, but they were forged better. Um, you could start with great steel, but if you make it poorly, it's not going to be a good knife also hold its edge better so and uh, they should look cool when you grind burger do you double grind um, kind of a personal preference but I would strongly recommend it um, I'd start out with a 3 8 or 3 16 something that's a little bit bigger and then finish up with your with, with your eighth inch yep. uh, plate um, if you don't double grind um, you're going to notice it when you're when you're chew, when you bite into and chew the burger. Um, it's not necessarily bad; it's just different. Um, what people mo most uh, often expect is to have a, a more finely ground product. Um, so I would double grind and finish it with that eighth inch grinder plate. And even if you don't want to go through an eighth inch, at least double grind twice through your three eighths or three sixteenths, because through that three eighths plate, huge chunks of fat sometimes sneak right through. And if you bite into something like that, it's not. I mean, as good as fat is, it's not appetizing to bite into a huge hunk of it. Yeah. What kind of smoke do you suggest for brisket? That's from Rachel. Um, I have a different opinion I on that. I know we have different opinions yeah. on that. You'd say hickory or mesquite? I'd say hickory, but I smoke everything in hickory because I don't think I have a fine enough palate to yeah. really taste any difference. Um, I, I like hickory. For me, hickory's the cheapest, the easiest to get. Um, so I do everything in hickory. Um, that's just my go-to. I don't even question using something else. I just use hickory. But for those of us with a more discerning palate. <laughs> a more defined palate. Yes. Uh, I like pecan. I use it for almost everything. Um, it's great on fish, great on beef, great on pork. So great on chicken. In fact, it's definitely better on, chick or better on chicken than either mesquite or hickory. David is asking, what is the minimum internal temperature for a snack stick? Um, there's a short answer and there's a long answer to that. The short answer is 160 degrees. Um, anytime you're cooking meat that is a ground product, um, cooking to 160 degrees, that gets you to instant lethality. Um, you know the product is cooked, you know it's safe, you're good to go. 
The long answer is um, it depends on how long you're at a certain temperature. Um, FSIS um, from the USDA has what they call Appendix A. Appendix A has a chart inside of it that says, okay, if you're at anywhere from 130 degrees, 140 degrees, 150 degrees, 160 degrees, um, anywhere in between, um, you need to be at that temperature for this many minutes or this many seconds, and then you have a fully cooked, um, safe product to eat, basically. Um, so if you don't cook to 160 degrees, you can get away with cooking to 150, um, but you need to be there for a certain amount of time. Right. So the easy answer is cook it to 160 because you know you're always there, and 160 is instant lethality with a safe product. Um, if you want to do something less, look up FSS, FSIS Appendix A and look at their um, time temperature chart and you can kind of gauge off of that where you need to be. So whoever um, said I should let him talk more, I pained me not to jump on that one, but I, I let him go. Do you want to jump in and no, finish anything? No, no, it's fine. Um, I can't remember his name. The gentleman who asked about the Little Smokies, um, it looks like we will have a couple in in just two days here. So am I looking at that right? It says firm receipt, right? Yeah. Yeah. So we that have just a couple of days. That's the second Little Smokies question I've had today. Um, if I didn't win yeah. the grill, I will settle for the grinder. <laughs> That's from John V. Boy, people are really happy for sharing. When somebody beats me at something, I'm not happy for them at all. I'm a sore loser, but a good winner. Tyler is asking any advice while I'm building my own smokehouse. I want to make sure I do not cut any corners. My best advice on that is head over to our Meatgistics website and post a question there. Yep. Um, unfortunately, we don't do a lot with the building of smokehouses. Um, we want to sell you a um, fully finished smokehouse. Um, that's ideal from our book. Um, we don't sell DIY smokehouses. Right. Um, but I know a lot of guys out there like building their own. Um, that's probably one of the most popular things it is. in what we do for people to do on their own is build a smokehouse. So if you go over to Meatgistics, um, that is what our site was built for, is to ask a question and let the community chime in with responses. Um, tons of other people out there have done it um, on their own. Um, if you ask that type of question, um, you will get a, a good response. Uh, from everybody on things Absolutely. they've done or things that they know of that are good to do. Um, I, th We could probably sit up here and, and give you some sort of advice, but I think you would ultimately get better advice asking the community over at Meatgistics um, and getting their input on it all. Um, and I'm going to post a uh, link directly to <coughs> one article or one thread um, that will be specifically helpful on that. Stevie B says, but I need a Weston 22, I think. Well, this one's a number eight. So if you need that 22, um, one thought on that is the difference between the Butcher Series and the uh, Pro Series through the 22s in price, I believe, is around 100 and something dollars, something in that range. Um, we just upgraded to uh, the Weston Pro 22. Uh, we've had all sorts of grinders out of stock back here, and we're trying to consolidate down to one. Uh, the Pro is an awesome grinder. We recently did some testing on uh, grinding speeds, and the Wesson 22, even though it's a, a home grinder, really stood up against some pretty stiff competition, um, or at least it, it gave its best effort. Uh, it's good little grinder, so if you're looking for something, the Pro or the Butcher, um, if you have the extra money, honestly, I would spend it, but either one you'll be okay with. I see a lot of comments about the weather um, from a little further back in the chat. Um, if anybody still has snow on the ground, I'm jealous. Uh, we have Where's not. Snow on the ground? Uh, Brian Schlegel. He's waiting there. patiently for the snow to melt. Huh. Um, I'd be out there skiing. It's my only complaint about living in Kansas. Oh, hey, is the uh, countertops quartz, right? 
Um, no, we thought it was crushed quartz, but it is granite. Oh, it's granite? It is granite. Okay. Uh, Nikki was asking what the countertop was. So, is there anything more specific than granite or no, it's just granite? granite. Okay. Yeah. Granite There's a remnant countertop. We got a great deal on. And I picked this out. Um, if you can tell from like everything in our old background, I have a strong affinity to gray and white. They're my two favorite colors. My house is gray and white inside and out. So, we were a little bit worried that everything was going to be too the same color once we got everything, but I think it worked out pretty well. Because you can't see from there, but our cabinets are straight gray too. So. Have we done any videos yet where we're facing a corner? No. Okay. We have done ones where you see the back though, like just in the background. Okay. But nothing where we're actually like facing a corner. Um, Hope Ford says, I've blown up social media promoting you guys. And of course my attempt at winning a great prize. We appreciate that Hope, that is awesome. Uh, recently, in the last couple of weeks to maybe, I don't know, a month, we have seen a, a decent increase in our social media um, interactions. We've got a lot more relevant comments, had some good conversations out there. Uh, yeah, obviously, we really appreciate that. And I think part of what it was is I did start taking a lot of our Meetgistics posts where people provided pictures and whether or not the description was great. Um, I started trying to post those so you could see what other people are making with our products. I thought that might be a little bit more interesting on social media for you than just straight what we were making. Um, I mean, let's be honest, we work here. We have literally every tool you could possibly need in meat processing uh, other than a buffalo chopper. We should have one of those. We have one in the test kitchen. Yeah. Okay, well we have literally every possible tool you could need. Uh, but seeing what other people are making at home with limited amounts of equipment or, you know, maybe everything, but it's all like Weston and whole stuff made for the home. I thought that might be a little more interesting to you guys and people seem to like it. So, so if you have something you've done that you want to see on social media, or if you just want to show us, go to the bragging board at meetistics.com, post it. Um, I've been going through saving a bunch of them and scheduling out the posts. So. Somebody said Austin is exactly right, so I know that person is wrong. No, that was uh, uh, Papa Sop. Oh, uh, okay. he's, he's a big Meetjustics no, user. user. I know he's right. Yeah, if if someone says I'm right, I'm there right. There you know. <laughs> Sorry, I'm not laughing at that. Nick calls. <laughs> says so. I had this rash. <laughs> Can't help you with that, Nick. Rub some. Uh, Willie's or ultimate steak and roast rub on it. Steak and roast rub is good on everything, <laughs> you know? <clears throat> uh, yeah, so Hunter, yes, the winner was announced. It was Sharon Speedy. I'll, I'll post that again. Um, it was Speedy, right? That was her last name? Pretty sure. Yeah, Speedy, just like it sounds. Okay. Ah, Dave, David Reddy, um, do you allow tours of your facility? Um, it's a good question. Typically, not to the general public. Um, if someone wanted to see a tour, might be able to make something happen there. Um, I don't know what's the best place to request something like that. Um, Honestly, yeah. I think it would probably be to go to meetjustics.com and just post chat a thing. to me. No, nah, I wouldn't. Want, I don't think we'd want it out oh. in front of everybody, would we? Chat's fine. Chat's for private. Yeah. Yeah. So if you wanted, if you were really interested in a tour of the facility, you could go to meetjustics.com. Uh, we have a chat function. If you just use that, my name is Jonathan on there at Jonathan. Um, we could try to set something up. Um, I, it would be the showroom. Back here, obviously, studio kitchen. Uh, could we show them the warehouse? Yeah, I wouldn't say no, but if if somebody's interested in like that, contact us and we'll work out some details there. Um, I think the easier answer in some of that is maybe, and I don't know how we would do it. Maybe this is a, a, a challenge for you and Patrick to try to figure out what what we would do. But can we do a live stream where we're walking around the building? Could we do a virtual tour? Yep. Um, because we could do, if we if we could do it, um, if we could move through the building with yeah. the camera, um, 
We could do a virtual tour. Right. Not any problem. Well, we could do it with a phone for sure. Do, oh, That's yeah. That's the easiest way to do it. We might, yeah. We, we need to, we'll have to t test that on the sound, see how it sounds. Okay. Um, but the phone would probably be better than the camera because we'd have to figure out with the, the streaming thing, um, power, Wi-Fi, the whole way. Power is not a problem. Um, because we so just webcaster? take it off. Yeah, because we have the battery backup thing. You just plug stuff into there. That runs the webcaster? No, but it could. Really? Yep. Okay. So, and then we just leave everything on the tripod and roll it around. Problem is going to be wireless connection to that. We're going to go into places with no connection and lose it. And what happens when it starts again? It should transfer okay. everywhere, but so yeah, we can I, think about something. The, like the that. phone may be the better option, but I, th I think we should look into that. We should uh, Oof. try to do something there. So Hope says you had tornadoes in the area yesterday. Three lives lost. Prayers for their families. Yeah, uh, I have to say, coming down from New York, that tornadoes was my biggest concern about being down here. And knock on wood, five years, I there's not even been one in the area, so. William is asking. India thing. William's asking about snack sticks, venison, yeah. what pork ratio, and what kind of fillers to stop shrinkage. Um, if you're doing venison, um, add 20 to 30 percent pork fat, just straight pork fat if you can do it. Um, if you don't have access to straight pork fat, um, try pork trim. Pork trim is like 50/50. Um, if you can't get pork trim. Um, then you can resort to just like pork butts. And anybody ought to be able to get pork butts. You can get pork butts at your local like Kroger, yep. uh, Walmart, wherever. Um, but if you do pork butts, do a 50-50 split. 50% venison, 50% pork butts. Um, ideally, you just do venison with like 20 to 30% uh, pork fat. Um, that'll probably end up in the best, at least in my opinion. Um, and then what kind of fillers to stop shrinkage? Um, some of the shrinkage will be um, how well you mix. As long as you mix really well, um, that's going to be your number one um, thing to address. Um, the next will be adding either uh, sure gel, yeah, so uh, soy protein blend, carrot fiber, super bind. Add something that's going to help um, bind the meat, hold water. Um, if you do that, use one of those. Um, I would probably say sure gel or super bind yeah. um, use one of those two those would be my top options um, and then just mix really well if you haven't seen any of our videos that talk about protein extraction um, we can't ever stress protein extraction enough when you're talking about a cured product Absolutely. you gotta you gotta mix so much that that the meat just is super sticky if you pick up a clump of it you can literally try to grab it and like pull it apart and it'll almost stretch like silly putty um, but that, that stickiness to the meat is protein extraction, and that is what's going to help your final product end up um, in a much, much better state. Um, help mold moisture, prevent being crumbly, stop wrinkling. Um, it, it covers a whole gamut of things. Yeah, and if you ever wanted to make just a real low, like say you didn't want to add pork fat for health, uh, religious, any reasons, um, I've done it in the past with chicken breast, which is like 3% fat. Adding carrot fiber, and superbine might be even better than carrot fiber, and cold phosphate. So I say this all the time, but cold phosphate increases the pH of the meat, which is potential for hydrogen. So by increasing the pH of the meat, it's actually increasing the water holding capacity of the meat. So you'll keep more juicy or juice and tenderness in the meat um, it is very important if making a really low fat bratwurst or whatever type of snack stick that you get a really good bind because it's going to try to to dry out on on and you want it all to stay in there, all the water to stay in there. Um, but yeah, it definitely can be done. I've done it. I think there's an article like how to make a juicy turkey bratwurst, something like that on meat logistics. That's that would help. You want to talk about beef fat? Catherine Daly's asking as about. As far as using it in a snack stick? Yeah. Or something like that? So beef fat or tallow, whatever, um, it's better than not having fat, but it's not as good as pork fat. So as far as I know, pork fat, certainly out of all the major animals, um, 
think someone told me once duck is even creamier, but I don't know if that's true or not. Uh, pork fat is very creamy. Uh, it does a good job at melting appropriately. So when you take a bite of a bratwurst, part of the reason it's going to taste better when it's uh, stronger and better when it's pork versus beef or uh, chicken, anything like that, is the fat's going to coat your mouth and it's going to allow the seasonings and the other tastes to just stay there longer. So it doesn't have any more seasoning in it. It just tastes like it does. <laughs> so yeah, uh, pork fat, better than anything else for this specific reason. <clears throat> um, somebody's asking about phosphate usage levels. Um, that was David Reddy. Um, Cold phosphate is used um, at a pretty low amount. Mm -hmm. You use only two ounces per 25 pounds of meat. Um, so if you're looking to add cold phosphate to something, um, sodium phosphate, whatever you want to call it, um, it's a very low usage. You might uh, want to get like a little kitchen scale to help weigh that out, um, but the usage on it is very small. So just two ounces for 25 pounds of meat. And if you use too much more than that, you can end up with like a soapy taste. Uh, so you do want to be somewhat careful to not just go crazy with that. Uh, Jamie Martinez asks, are snack stick seasoning kits gluten free? So <coughs> it, de it depends on your sensitivity to gluten. If you're extremely sens or sensitive to gluten, then no, nothing in the Excalibur line is going to be gluten free because it's not processed in a gluten free facility. So some cross contamination can occur. Now, if you're just trying to avoid gluten, when you look at the product on a web page, you can actually scroll down and there's a section uh, down there like it's a header that says additional info. Underneath that will be an ingredient section. It lists most of, if not all, the ingredients. There's a few where they give you the generic spices just because it's proprietary and they don't want people copying them. If it's a gluten, it'll be in there though. But if it's a gluten, okay. If it's a gluten, it'll be in there. So you can look through the ingredients um, on each individual one. Uh, Big John, no, I have not used that pizza dough recipe yet. I am trying to get back down to my fighting weight, so I've been watching what I eat these last couple of weeks um, Wait, very closely. Did you get like a private message on something, or is it just from the last live stream? Just from the last live stream. Are you sure? Positive. I don't know if I believe you. <laughs> yeah, you probably shouldn't. He sent me the recipe. <laughs> That's horrible. Come on, Big John. Uh, <laughs> I hope you gave John like some like wrong advice no, in good, there like and purposely recipe. messed yeah, something like up because we don't need to help him out more than uh, he's already gonna he's he's already got a leg up on pizza. He's from New York. I mean, he doesn't need a better recipe for it. Yeah, that everything being flat and pizza specifically and kind of food in general are my biggest complaints about down here. People, way nicer, way <laughs> nicer. Um, but I mean, the best pizza we have around here is from Casey's. No. It, it, well, no, no, I take no. that back. Oak and pie is by far the best, but it's like $20 for a pizza this big. And that's an no. appetizer. No, 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 it's like, it's, it's 11 to like 14, 11 to 14. No, the Coppola is more than that. No. Yes, it is. No, it's like 14. Either way, it's this big. Yeah. Yeah, have you I'm had Wichita Brewing? Yes, I have many times. I know you two love that place. Have you got the itis pizza? Yes, I have. Oh. The itis pizza is good. But Something's this wrong is not this you. can't be exciting to our viewers. I think unless they're from Wichita, itself. then I assume it's If anyone is around the Wichita area and has a pizza place that's worth traveling, I love pizza and will travel. Um Benjamin's asking, you mentioned pig butt, why not fresh side pork or belly? Um, honestly, other pork options would be fine if you're looking for pork fat. Um, the reason I kind of normally go with pork butt is that uh, it's just cheap and easy access. Um, it's one of the easiest pieces of pork, in my opinion, to get. If you're looking for just pork belly, you're probably going to be more expensive or harder to get. Sometimes it's hard to find fresh belly. More expensive would be. Um, right. But it's also going to be more expensive, yeah. yeah. And um, in general, on a pork, the higher up the fat is, the better it is for sausage. It'll be a little bit harder 
Um, I, I know Dylan once told me that it was, that had something to do with some saying that was the hot, mm. I can't remember. But yeah, in general, the, the higher it up, the harder it is, and it'll be better for support. My wife had a good comment. Uh, she's obviously watching. Uh, she says, Poplar Pizza. What? Uh, have you been to Poplar's? No. What is that place? They've got, they've got two locations, one in Wichita and one in Howard. Okay. Um, that, that's the best pizza in Wichita, oh. I'd say. Have you ever gone there? Poplar's. Uh, yeah. Okay. I will uh, try it. I might have to sneak in one if we have a pizza Ooh. comp. I'll just buy one of theirs <laughs> and like imitate it as my own. Um, it's re really good, really good. Um, and then Steve asks, is pork butt best for a breakfast sausage? Yeah, I would say. So David uh, asking, uh, pork butt and shoulder, are they the same? Yes, um, terms are interchangeable. If you call it pork butt, pork shoulder, um, same thing, no difference. Uh, depends on who you talk to as to what they call it, but same thing. Um, and is there an advantage to hanging sausage versus laying flat in a rack? Biggest advantage would be that you're not going to have the marks from the rack. And while it's very minimal, uh, there is a difference in how the air will flow around a hanging sausage versus how it's going to go around that rack. Um, so it'll be a little bit better. But if hanging is either easier for you um, or you just like it better, there's nothing wrong with it. So Poplar Pizza was established in 1982 in Buffalo, New York. Yeah. What? Yeah. Uh, I I should I, I forgot about that. I shouldn't have left it out. Should but yeah, they, they started out in New York. Yeah. They moved to Howard. Huh. Why would you, like Howard's a very small town. Okay. Moved to Howard. Started pizza joint. They're they're actually technically in Andover, Andover. Um, not Wichita, but uh, okay. the second one's in Andover, uh, Kellogg and Andover Road. Yeah. Okay. You would like it. Yeah. Guarantee. Well, there's a, like a know. new place out there called Guidas or something. I did not care for it at all. Out where? Out in Andover. Oh. Uh, Again, this can't be fun for our viewers. We're talking about local pizza places. If anyone out there hates pizza, let us know in the comments, but I'm pretty <laughs> sure everyone loves pizza. All right, Doug asks, hey guys, uh, have my own recipe for snack sticks, but can't seem to get the casings to stick or tighten up to the meat. <laughs> when I'm done cooking them. Is there something I need to add to the recipe? Uh, my response to that would be, I mean, I hate to say this, but it's something in your recipe. Uh, if you're getting proper protein extraction, you either have not enough salt or too much of something. Uh, this is why one of the biggest things that we recommend is going with a prepackaged seasoning. The guys at Excalibur specialize in this. This is what they do. They don't do anything else. Um, they get the proper amount of salt, they get the proper amount of all the other ingredients you need. Um, I mean, specifically salt is incredibly important in making snack sticks, any type of cured sausage where you need uh, some binding, some protein extraction. Um, so, I mean, my first thought would be it's something with that. Now, other things you could definitely try would be adding a binder like a sure gel or a super bind. Superbind would be pretty good because it's going to give you uh, potato starch and carrot fiber. So the potato starch, great thing about it is it forms a gel at like 135 degrees, which is the almost exact same temperature that meat starts to really sweat at. So as that's expelling its water, the potato starch is forming a gel, so it's ready to accept all that. Plus you get the water holding capacity of carrot fiber. So those two things together are a huge advantage. Uh, a little bit more expensive of a binder, um, but if you're looking to do something specific, it, it definitely can help. This is what I recommend to people when they've got like, they got finally got their elk or something, they want to make good so or snack sticks or sausage, and they just, it's worth it for them to spend a little bit more money to make sure they nail it. Superbind's yeah. great for that. So, yeah. so I, I hope that helps. <coughs> yeah. So that'll help plump it up, um, and it should help with your other problems as well. I'm pretty sure Joe Hell is one of my favorite people. <laughs> He's a Joe is a, a strong meat just excuser, um, but he also loves pizza and says doesn't trust anyone who doesn't like pizza. Okay. And pizza is my number one food group. So yeah, hey. no, I've. I don't, uh, I don't trust a guy named Colton because he says Ziggy's is the best. <laughs> <laughs> Ziggy's is not the best pizza. That Ziggy's is, is good. It's, okay. it's not good. Joe also though said uh, your countdown to the live feed was off and he missed last month's start too. So 
What do you mean? Uh, Everyone else seems to not have had a problem with it. I don't know. He he <coughs> he loves pizza. Don't betray uh, me, Joe. So I, I believe Joe at this point. <laughs> um, Joseph Taylor says, come to Sedgwick. Kilroy's Pizza. And I've heard of that place, but... Nice. Ever, I don't know if I've ever been to Sedgwick. So we're That's in Sedgwick County, away. but Sedgwick is a town nah, as well. Yeah, there's another place. Okay, I've only lived here five years. It's not like I should know the area. I lived here 27. Um, where exactly is Sedgwick? Oh, yep. The best pizza you can make is on your Green Mountain Grill. Homemade smoked sausage, cheddar cheese, and sauerkraut. Sauerkraut on pizza. Wow. Uh, so, Tyler, do you have the Green Mountain pizza oven, or how are you doing that? Because I know they sell that specific, mm -hmm. well, we, we sell them that specific uh, attachment or insert. What would be the best binder for snack sticks to stay on the keto diet? I feel like you need to answer that because I have not really been on a diet lately. So, <laughs> uh, so your binder's not going to be your problem. You can use carrot fiber, sure gel. Uh, sure gel, well, no, so I'll back out. Your best bet would be carrot fiber because it's not going to contain any actual protein. Um, you'd have to fight a little bit of the sh natural sugar that's in carrots. But even that, I feel like most of it's going to be extracted. Um, so carrot fiber would be your best binder. Your biggest problem is going to be your seasoning. Um, most of those snack stick seasonings have a bunch of sugar. I can definitely tell you to stay away from any of them that say barbecue anywhere in it. Those are always going to have a ton of sugar. Um, in fact, the best way to pick one might be to go through all of them and look at the one that has the least amount of product weight that's gonna be a good indicator of how much sugar it has. So if it's a half pound of seasoning, you're way better off than if it's one and a half pounds because there's a good chance that that one pound difference is like 80% sugar. So. so so you know where Sedgwick is. That's Wichita, that's Sedgwick. It's not that far away. It's not that far. No, it's like 30 minute drive. Cool. That was Kilroy's, right? Yep, and yeah. Tyler does have that pizza oven insert. Awesome. Yeah, Hope says nope to Splenda. Yeah, I'm not a Splenda fan either. What'd you say? <laughs> Is it actually bad for you? Yeah, That's not good. Um, so Ryan Jones is asking, do you have a favorite pizza crust recipe? Uh, Big John, if you're still on. Um, would you be okay either on Meatistics creating a post that is your recipe or having me do it? Just let me know. If you don't want to, I, I won't. Um, but definitely looked like a pretty good recipe. So if people can benefit from that. Uh, Gene, sorry, no, you didn't win. The winner was uh, Sharon Speedy from somewhere in Indiana. Yeah, uh, yeah. yeah. Tell Indiana. City. Tell City. All right, so I will draw next time. Until you forget, and <laughs> and it's had you last then I, time. I, I do it again. Go ahead. Um, the uh, where's the comment? Lost it. Um, tips for grilling pizza. I have my own opinion there. Um, John, do you want any part, or do you want me to just just go? Okay. Normally on grilling pizza, you can like. If you have the one, like a special attachment, some grills have it, you can do that. Um, I don't normally. Um, you can do like a, like a baking stone or cooking stone, like the ceramic ones. Sometimes there's round ones, square ones. Um, we sell a round one, we sell a square one. Um, those work well. Um, if you just don't want to use anything else. Um, if you're doing a pre-bought pizza, if it's like one of the take and bake places, um, or if it's from your grocery store and it's like a frozen pizza, um, you can almost always expect to have to grill it at the temperature that's, that is set there for the oven and a little bit longer. At least that's what my experience has been. Um, grilling a pizza isn't hard. Um, d start out with the temperature and the time as listed. 
like normally to cook that pizza and then expect to maybe need to, uh, to, to leave it on a few minutes longer. It depends on how you like your crust. Um, the biggest problem on grilling pizza is you go from like doughy to burnt quickly, um, more quickly than the oven. Um, <clears throat> but it rarely, if ever, is shorter than the oven. So the preset directions on how to cook a pizza, whether it's take and bake or frozen pizza from the store, um, you can expect to take at least that long, usually just a couple minutes past it. But if you have not grilled pizza, you need to. Grilled pizza with a little bit of smoke flavor on it, um, it's amazing. Makes, makes pizza just so much better. Um, specifically for toppings for pizza? I would not do what Joe just commented as um, with sauerkraut. Joe, I don't know what, what kind of pizza you're making with, with sauerkraut. Um, maybe if you're up north, um, I think sauerkraut's a little more popular the further north you go. Down here in Kansas, not as popular. I think if you go further south, um, you get along the Gulf, you're not going to like the sauerkraut. Um, I wouldn't put sauerkraut on pizza, but you know, to each their own. Um, anything, I don't know, in my opinion, like anything goes on pizza, um, doesn't matter what it is. Um, that's, in my opinion, one of the funnest things to do is just make stuff up as you go. Put whatever you want on it. Good timing. Uh, Big John said, uh, John, you can go ahead and post it. Okay, cool. I'll make a post about that tomorrow. Um, and Gary's here. Uh, it, Gary, I'm sorry, I don't know if it's Gary or Jerry. Um, in your emails, it's usually G-E-R-R-Y, so I assume that was Jerry, but I see one R here. Um, so for those of you who aren't big Nutristics users, you may or may or you wouldn't be familiar with Jerry. Jerry is uh, sight impaired, but still does tons of stuff with meat processing. I mean, he's done some really impressive stuff. Uh, it's cool to see somebody not let a tough card stop them from doing yeah. what they want to do. So, what he does is amazing. <clears throat> it is. I yeah. I make Reuben pizza with kraut. So Maria, if don't thumbs down that. He thumbs down that. It, that's that sounds delicious. Um, one of my favorite bratwurst seasonings is the Reuben bratwurst. It is delicious. I absolutely love it. But pizza is either cheese or <laughs> cheese and pepperoni. Anything else is like a artisanal something or other. It's not true pizza. So. You missed our conversation about sauerkraut on pizza. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm glad I did. I was naysaying it though. Oh, okay. Just, just to clarify. Um, Although there's several so people talking about sauerkraut I'm, I'm on pizza now. This is, yeah, this is, this is bothering about me. It too. I feel like um, I need to try it though now. Real quick, Fran, uh, the prize this month is going to be a Weston number eight butcher series, uh, a collection of our favorite seasoning shakers. And then we are getting new hats and new shirts in, so one of those each. We move need, pizza with fre all right, basil definitely should be on pizza. But, but that's not cheese or pepperoni. Uh, but it's an herb. Oh. So we're okay with Oh, herbs. so you're a vegetarian now. <laughs> <laughs> green peppers are not good on They're pizza. They're the worst. No. They're the worst on everything. Oh, yeah. I hate green peppers. So the cheese No. No, they, I can't eat green peppers. Like if you made uh, Italian sausage, peppers and onions, and they had green peppers in there, pick all the green peppers you want out. I taste that, like it just cooks into the meat. I hate oh, green peppers with a passion. So th there is definitely a growing trend in our culture right now for fermented vegetables. You see everybody eating sauerkraut, kimchi. Um, they definitely do have positive health benefits specifically on your gut bacteria. But it is fascinating to see this happen. Like you see it commented on more and more and more. So. Oh, Nick. There's, that's what I was going to say. <laughs> oh Patrick my gosh. from off camera said, I could see why she was your ex. Um, that sounds <laughs> terrible. 
terrible. What sauce? That's even worse than anchovies. No. Yes. You could... Tuna? You could make an okay tuna pizza. No, you couldn't. Yeah. Gordon Ramsay couldn't make an okay tuna, tuna pizza. No, I'm okay. better than Gordon Ramsay. Then. <laughs> You've done this? No. 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 No, nor is I, I just, I'm no, imagining no. that I could. Let's get Gordon Ramsay on the show. <laughs> okay, so hold on. Steve says, here in Delaware and Philly, we have sweet peppers made from green peppers, and they're awesome. Okay, so it, as long as they're, they're sweet and they don't have that basic green pepper taste, I'm okay with them. Like, you know, a, a red pepper, an orange pepper, yellow pepper, those are all the same. They're just further along in the ripeness. So it's the same thing, but when they're in that green state and you cook them, there's some taste I don't like. So I don't know what you do to make them sweet, but I'm sure that makes them a lot better. Nobody, nope, nope to fish on pizza. That's hope. Mm. What'd you say? They said smoked salmon on pizza. I just don't know what sauce in there you could put. No, you can do the smoked salmon with the red sauce. Really? That's really interesting. Hmm. That'd be good. So, uh, for anyone who's a fan of cold curing, uh, slow curing at home, it's something we've always stayed out of. And then recently, one of the guys in our commercial sales and I uh, started working on making like a, a quote unquote copa. So it's not actually like the neck muscle like a copa should be, um, but making a copa out of just a pork loin. Uh, I used the fig and rum spiced cocktail rub with added salt so that I was at about 5% salt. Um, and then we wet aged it for nine days, pulled it, re-seasoned it, wrapped it, put it back in the cooler for nine days, pulled it, and then we put it in our Eller drying cabinet for, we were going for 45 days, but it started shrinking so drastically that we went ahead and pulled it, I think like 32 or something like that. But we then used our Walton's 12 inch slicer to slice it like prosciutto thin, and it was delicious. I mean, absolutely delicious. Now. Some people didn't like it, but that was because they didn't like fig, not because they didn't like the actual meat. I've got two right now in the fridge. Um, one is just straight salt, 5% salt, I believe it was 5%. The other is chorizo seasoning that we formulated to have a total of 5% salt. We're gonna do the same thing. They're gonna sit in there for, I think, 12 days on this, pull, season the rest of it, You know, pack the rest of the seasoning on, wrap them, put them back in the uh, fridge for another 12 days, pull them and then put them in the other cabinet. So in like a month and a half, maybe like two months, we're gonna have some hopefully awesome Copa. Um, and once we have that down, we're gonna go ahead and make videos on it, show you guys how to do it. Doing it at home might be a little bit difficult uh, since you can't really control your refrigerator's temperature to where we're gonna wanna go. Um, but we'll give you how to do it and then hopefully you can extrapolate a little bit how to do that at home. Uh, what we usually do with things like that, um, specifically like Land Jaeger comes to mind, we try to show you the easiest way to do it uh, at home, but with dry aged stuff, since there's such a danger of it spoiling, uh, we will just go ahead and go buy the book and kind of leave it to you a little bit to adjust for how to process at home, strictly because we wouldn't want to be responsible in any way for somebody making something that spoiled you ate it and got sick so what we'll do is go ahead and give you like the buy the book answer and let you try to figure out uh, how to modify that for home use Ooh, so the smoked salmon was with a basil pesto or white garlic cream sauce both of those sound good oh okay so he's just saying they sound good yeah brett those do sound good hope that should that thought should pass right through your head fish calzone no let that go in one ear and out the other and also calzones versus strombolis i'm strong on the stromboli side What's the difference? Uh, so a calzone has ricotta cheese which for anyone who doesn't know basic italian ricotta is means reused or something like that 
and it's just what's left over when they make a mozzarella. So they make a good cheese and then use the junk that was left over to make a disgusting cheese. Ricotta should just never be used. That's why I don't like ziti, or uh, not ziti. Um, what is it that's all layered? Lasagna. Lasagna. Don't lasagna. like lasagna. I don't like uh, calzones. None of that. Ricotta cheese is nasty. See, and I, I would have said, and this is where I'm, I may be totally off base, but I always thought the difference between a calzone and a stromboli was sauce or no sauce. I thought calzones have sauce and strombolis don't. No. I just went to Sbarro's. Stromboli did not have sauce. Really? Yeah. Then I would be totally off base. Well, no, that's what no, he was saying. Yeah, that's oh, what you were saying. Yeah. Sorry, I thought, thought vice versa. Okay. Uh, so for April, the winner, I just wrote it out, but um, Sharon Speedy was the winner for April's Big Grill. Um, we haven't yet drawn. It is 5 o'clock. Do we just want to draw the knives? Um, How many entries maybe? do we have? Um, we still got 120 people on here, and we've got two where was it yeah but just because we three hundred doesn't mean that they're gonna leave we've got yeah, some well. will of course some will but we got we got just over 300 people who have entered the uh um live giveaway okay. of the knives um Ooh. maria made pepperoni sticks with the dill seasoning yep. So how did you make pepperoni sticks with them? Are you saying you made like snack sticks with them or did you do something specific? Because that sounds really interesting. First of all, the dill pickle seasoning is absolutely awesome. Delicious, I haven't had it on anything that's bad. I've made uh, restructured jerky on it, I've made regular jerky, I've made snack sticks, I made almonds, um, everything it's been great on. So I'm a huge fan of that seasoning. Uh, so if you go to waltonsinc.com slash live to the side of where our video player is, there'll be two ways to enter. Um, sign up for the newsletter, refer to a friend, just click on those and it should get you an entry. And then tomorrow uh, we'll have the entry live for the Weston number eight butcher series, which is going to be the main part of uh, May's. No. So no. You could make a little change of that and make uh, mozzarella cheese, and it'd be much better. <laughs> right. Yeah, Go ahead. Go uh, ahead. Uh, David, I think I saw you make a similar comment to that on one of the social media platforms, either earlier today or yesterday. Um, so uh, your research chef, can you explain a little bit about what that is or maybe make a post on Majestics about what that is? So, we've still got uh, ran it. She's right. Sorry, a ran lot it. of people on, yep. um, and I like to use some of these to get some uh, community input on things. Um, I, ha I had a request the other day for us to provide leather aprons. Um, interesting request, and then I actually started looking it up, and I was kind of excited. I was like, a leather apron would be sweet. Um, it it be. actually seems like something that is actually used in like the barbecue and grilling, smoking world. Um, and you could weld in it. And you could weld in it, yes, welding as well. Yes. Um, but then I saw, I, what made me think of it is I walked back hides in and, and I saw the hides and leather on the box over there. Um, so one, would you, asking you, but also asking everybody out there as well, would anybody be interested in a leather apron? I think it would be cool It'd be a really heavy duty apron that would take a lot of abuse. You could do anything in it. We right. could put a stinking sweet like Walton's brand in brand it somewhere. It. Yeah. yeah but that would be pretty cool. I have no idea what it's gonna cost, but I reached out to our leather supplier okay. and they're willing to do something. I just gotta send them some info on like a size right. and what we wanna have done with it. Um, but yeah, I would definitely is a leather apron anybody out there um, would you use a leather apron is that something you've seen before um it's like a huge w i mean if we could put a w on it yeah i would do it but um just in general leather apron i feel regardless of the w if we could put a w brand on it that'd be cool but regardless of that yeah. i kind of look at it as like that's that's a sweet apron everybody's gonna come over to your house when you're smoking a grill and, yeah. and you're gonna be wearing this leather apron 
and that's going to be just yeah, like yeah, king that. That's cool. Yeah. Or yeah, like that. Different colors? No. No. Just straight. No. No. Like no, just leather. Leather color. Leather. leather yeah. Brown. <laughs> like brown. Brown. Yeah. yeah. The only downside of that is it would be very hot in the summer. Yeah, it wipe off easily, very easily. Yeah. And the bad thing is I brought a couple of those hide pieces back to my dogs to, for chew toys, so they would chew the ever-living snot out of that. It'd be okay. It'd be a good chew toy. I've got two, well, I've got one dog that is going to be enormous and another good size dog. I've got a 90-pound um, pit bull mastiff mix, and then I've got a South African mastiff who's not even six months old and it's almost a hundred pounds so when they chew things it gets gets pretty intense in there uh, Steve if you go to waltonsinc.com slash win on the right side of that page there are two different ways to in or to enter uh, you can sign up for our newsletter and you can refer a friend would it come with a hockey mask <laughs> <laughs> and where is it? And this knife. So we got another no? another person Nothing. asking, how do you enter for the knives? Right. I just told is that you. what you're saying? No, you said the hockey mask. No, before that, I was saying go to waltonsinc.com slash win on the right side. No, there's another question, like after that one. Yeah, after like the leather stuff. Yeah, so Steve. Like, you answered that? I, I Sorry. just I'm, said that. I'm ignoring you right now because... Uh -huh. Yeah. If you hear that buzzing, that's our fridge. That's but actually awkward. Hockey around. mask, leather apron, and this. That is a powerful move. Just chase people slowly. All you do is walk. That's like a horror movie. Yes, that, very no, much so. No. I don't think we should encourage that that's type of behavior. That's where we were going with it. See, Hope gets it. Bone saw. <laughs> a, a 404 well saw? <laughs> Uh, Steve, let us know if you found how to do that, how to enter. Um, we got a lot on the leather apron. We did. I feel like that's maybe a go. Okay. I think it'd be awesome. The que I think the bigger question is then what to do with it. Somebody said pockets. So do you want like chest pockets? Down do you want like pockets. Down, pockets down pockets or both? But... So, uh, Gary says, uh, or Jerry says, Walton's orange. That might be a little oh. bit hard to do. Yeah, I knew. No, we'll like find that. a way. We can, we can, we can do Walton's <laughs> orange. John and I have this little argument about. It's not an uh, argument. It's, no, it's, it's not an argument. It's a discussion. I like the orange. About like things like on set here, and like we don't have enough orange. See all the white and gray. He talked about a, that earlier about how his two favorite colors are white and gray. But the orange gloves. We need more orange on the set. So anytime there's anything that references orange, I'm just in. Okay. But okay. I, I honestly, that's I don't know, I don't know. He loves do orange. I, can you do orange leather? Yeah, absolutely. You can do yellow. You can do so. You can do orange. Um, I totally wear it shirtless underneath. Nick Hall. <laughs> <laughs> uh. <laughs> <laughs> Let's not go there. I well, do. I do. I. You definitely want to not pay attention to who to Lee who's earlier comment then. Yeah, I saw. I was gonna say <laughs> I saw an earlier comment about some chaps or chaps, however you want to pronounce it. Um, gonna pretend I didn't see that one. <laughs> All right. Well. Do you have any other questions that you want to get interaction with? No. Okay. Real quick though, before I do draw this. Um, so we're always looking for good ideas of what you guys want to put on sale. Um, I don't know the best way for them to, to get recommendations on that. Should we do something where during the, each month's previous live stream drawing, that's a weird way to say that, we let them pick something that we can put on sale and add that to the sale list. 
I feel like that should be like a Megistics thing. Okay. We should make like a separate section for like oh, Ask Waltons. Already, though. Yeah, but if, if it, Megistics has been growing a lot and it's continued to grow, we, John and I have had discussions about how we're going to add more yeah. to it, but there probably should be a, just like a, doesn't have to be this, but Ask Us, Ask Waltons, Ask me so just like non meat processing questions, yeah, like more product questions, yeah, okay, something there, yeah, but something like just a it, it'd be a place that can go back and reference. We do it in the chat, like and then it's like a one time thing. Yeah, I like that, it should be something people can go back to, okay. All right, I'm gonna draw the winner um, for the knives, uh, 330 users. So if you're still on, you have a one in 330 chance. How much are they worth? Uh, Do you remember? Should I look? 400 and something, I believe, with the, <laughs> with the chef's choice. And again, um, whoever wins, I'll send you an email, um, and I'll give you the option of waiting just a couple of days. It might be middle of next week to get the shirt and the hat. Uh, we're hoping to have new hats by Friday, right? That's our hope. Yeah. Do you know if they ship today? I have not seen anything, but um, haven't been on email very All much right. today. So winners, draw winners, allow repeat winners, right? Yes. Okay. And draw. The winner is uh, Jerry Mass. So it's uh, massjerry at gmail.com from Bellevue, Florida. See, you didn't do it the fun way. This no, is why I, I, I pick it, the winners. I, I did it the normal way. No, you gotta like narrow it down. No, pick, pick the state, nobody city. Nobody likes like, that. Because then you're... No, everyone loves that. No. It's so, you, you like get, you, you kick out some people initially and they still are like, ah, oh, I lost. But then like, you could go like, the the last name starts with a <laughs> no, whatever. You can't do and then that. people are like, oh, my chances just increased, uh, even though they, they, they didn't at all. But it makes it more entertaining. Okay. We'll just let you pick winners then from now on, and I'll tune out while you do that. All right, so Jerry, we'll go ahead and uh, I'll send you an email. Um, and an important note, um, I'll state that in the email, but we give you a, a specific time range you have to respond in. Uh, give that back to us, and we'll go ahead and get everything sent out. So Nick, why on the leather um, would you want a zipper on the front? I've, I've, <laughs> I've never seen a zipper on an apron. Um, or yeah, you mean like a pocket zipper? Um, there's gotta be something else there. Can you think of anything? Nothing good. Okay. Never mind. I'm just gonna stop asking Nick questions now. Our uh whatever you want to call it, delay, has been almost nothing on this. So as much as we complained about the changes YouTube's made. Yeah, last time it was like a 15 second yeah. delay. It's, yeah, it's That's pretty nice. excellent. How thick are we talking? See you, Hope. I don't know. Um, what are typical thicknesses for leather? I mean, I don't know. Do you get an option? I'm sure. I don't do enough with leather. Most of what we get leather-wise is like just a scrap. We use leather scraps to um, help clean, clean, yeah. uh, clean trolleys. Um, trolleys go on like the, the ra metal rails that you see in like a meat processing plant. Um, we don't use or make like anything into like a actual leather product. What we get out of it is just the bits, pieces, this, that. Yeah. But so we're saying two to three, five to six, or seven to eight ounce thickness. <coughs> and then Catherine says you don't need welding thickness, but I kind of want it. If I'm gonna wear a leather apron, I want to be able to weld in it. Well, the downside is is the bigger one we get, it's gonna cost more. And it's gonna weigh more. Like the co the the bigger expensive harder. one, like could be like a hundred bucks for an apron. The middle one could be fifty, and the cheaper one could be twenty five. I don't know. I'm I'm making up prices, but I think they'd be more expensive than that. But sure. You think so? A leather one? I don't know. 
Four ounce or more. Yeah, I would say you'd want it to be at least four ounces so that it would hold up. I mean, I'm guessing that you're going to be investing 70 bucks, something like that. Nah, it can't be that much. Can't Leather's not can't say kiss cheap. My eyes <laughs> <laughs> so the more of these we do, the more he... Is starting to like become so, yeah. a part of it. Eventually, he's going to have to sit up here. Our our video guy Patrick is sitting over here, and uh, someday he's going to be sitting up here in the middle. I feel like he's going to have to. Well, yeah, he's going to on the other. I was going to say, where would he sit? But he's going to have to sit in the middle because you always sit on that side, and yes. I always sit on this side. Uh, when we had room for an actual man size yeah, Austin wanted to switch it up when we moved to this. I thought that was. No, I just offered to yeah, switch. Terrible it. idea. Uh, waxed canvas instead of leather. That's the, interesting. That the, the, a lot lighter. The biggest downside to wax canvas is I don't have a distributor for that, <laughs> <laughs> or sorry, a manufacturer. Um, oh, lay you! I'm like, I don't see lay me. <laughs> so Patrick would just lay down here. <laughs> We don't need to do that. <laughs> um, so no, these are just uh, um, sparkling waters. They're like seltzers. That's what we drink during our Lacroix. Have Lacroix. You, yeah. yeah. So like, just only like the lime on Lacroix is good. Every other flavor is horrible. Well, even the lime, it's like they take one little half a lime and squirt it in, and that's like for a whole keg's worth. Yeah. It's like just barely tasting something else. I don't like it. I'd rather drink just straight water. Honestly, LaCroix do really well as like mixers for other things. Um, Where do you work, Catherine? Sorry, go ahead. Yes, they're great mixers if you want to add vodka or something to. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah. Aren't you a big mule fan? Moscow mules. Oh, yeah. Love Moscow's. What's the main ingredient in both of them? Vodka. <laughs> and, no, uh, uh, ginger, ginger beer. Ginger beer. Gin with lime is always good, yeah. Okay, so Catherine works at a deli shop. So she said, I sling boxes of brisket and pork butts for exercise. So she works at a deli shop. Okay. It's interesting. I feel like uh, deli shops were never really on the outs, but it's definitely something that feels like it's coming back. Yeah. The more people care more mm -hmm. about like the quality of the meat they get, it's people, yeah. cool to see. They feel better about buying from a deli, a meat market, a uh, custom processor than they do Walmart. Walmart, I, I, I don't want to like downplay the meat, yeah. meat you get from anywhere, do. but if you know where it comes from, people are more comfortable, more comfortable with that. that. Yep. They like knowing and you get those smaller shops and you get that there. It's an interesting, interesting thing to see happen, and probably a good thing. Mm -hmm. um, Nick, I just want you guys to know that my family loves you guys, and I do too. We love you also, Nick. It was f time we finally said it. Did you actually close the giveaway, or does it close it when you... Uh, it should close it when I do the winner. Okay. I mean, there's no reason. I'll go ahead and close it now. <laughs> yeah, go ahead and close it. Um, it it still says open on okay. my screen. I refreshed and it's still there. All right, that should be closed. Show ended. What does it show as ended? On live, I'll find out. Don't worry about it. Okay. Um, so, John, I answered this earlier. Um, is, is there advantage to hanging sausage versus laying sausage on racks while smoking? Uh, yeah, there are some advantages. One would be you're not going to get your great marks into the sausage, which you will have if you lay them down. Now, that's not a huge issue. The other one would be that when you're hanging them, you're having airflow all the way around them. When you're laying them, you're having part of it touch that metal, and the metal is gonna be hotter than the surrounding air. So you're 
cooks just a little bit unevenly. Now, if it's easier for you to lay them, just lay them. Uh, it's not worth going through a huge rigmarole to switch your whole setting out. Um, but if you can hang them, it's worth hanging them. See you, Nick. Nope, not a problem, John. Yeah, we have cloth uh, ones. Royal King's got them, right? No, that's we sell aprons like meat processing. Like oh, you have like to the have aprons. butchers' aprons. Yeah, yeah. White aprons, uh, red aprons, like cut resistant aprons. Like we sell a ton of aprons. So what I'm taking out of today so far, um, we need to do a video tour of the building. Yep. We'll come up with something there. Um, and I still think it'd be a cool idea to buy a little GoPro, put it in a bin, and do like showing what, like order. So start in customer service with somebody on the phone go back to printing station, have the order print. Because, I mean, we are, would you even consider us a small company? Were we medium size in your mind? Mm, no, in, I mean, in the classification of businesses, we're a small company. To be yeah. a medium sized company, like technically, like you've got small, medium, and enterprise. Small is like zero to 500, okay. like employees. Right. Medium is 500 plus, and like enterprise is big. Sure. We don't have 500 employees. Yeah, yeah, we have like 40. All right. Um, but uh, the only reason I bring it up is our warehouse is, for the size of the company, we are very impressive. I mean, part of the reason that we're able, I mean, our shipping guys obviously do a great job, but our warehouse is set up really well. So when you call in or place an order online, a ticket is printed back there, and the way our warehouse is laid out is the bins are numbered, obviously, and they go, it prints it out where they can start at one side, start walking to the other side, and will lay out, um, and they can pick everything in order. So they're not walking to one end, the other end, one end, the other end. I mean, when you consider we have well over a thousand products that we keep in stock, how many products do we have that we keep in stock? Uh, 4,000. So 4,000 products we keep in stock. And generally, I mean, they can pick those orders in just a couple of minutes. I mean, it's, it is pretty cool to see. So. But yeah, so you put a GoPro in one of those things, show someone come up, pick it up. And then we have a conveyor belt system down that goes into a, a trailer. So, I mean, that'd be a cool video too. We should wait a couple months. We're about to make some changes out there. Oh, really? It's going to be even cooler. Cool. Oh, yeah. Joe says it still says 41 minutes before your show starts. So I, I can't. I don't know where he's looking at that. No, I just I just looked that up. Um, 41 minutes. Yeah, five, six. Joe is a West Coast guy. Um, I said, C I said yeah, CST. Yeah, well, but that was on the, uh, um, the giveaway. Okay. So on our pages... Um, we are drawing on the, the countdown, you know, like the watch live uh -huh. in, in blah, blah, blah. Time. Yeah. Um, that pulls just off of our time zone. We have a problem there. So people on the East Coast are seeing that we're live an hour beforehand. Right. And people on the West Coast are seeing too late. So That's we're going to. That's why we had yeah. so many people already there when we logged in. Okay. We're going to have to change something there that calculates Oof. in the local time zone. You're going to have to change something there. Are you sure? I'm positive I can't. I think that's in your wheelhouse. <laughs> <laughs> I know it's not. Sure. Give me access to the code. And let's see what happens. You do. You have access right there. Uh, oh, it's just on that page? Yeah, it's on that page. Oh. You just got to learn how to write JavaScript. I'm sure I can figure something out. You want to learn how to write JavaScript? Not really. Okay. But if I have to, I'm sure no, I can. I'll, no, I'll, I'll look into it. But yeah, Do you want to give me a week to try to figure out how to write no, one tiny not. little piece no, of code? Not. Yeah, we'll we'll get something changed there because yeah, I, I just looking at it, we've we've got a problem, Joe. Sorry about that. Have a good one, Catherine. Uh, as far as I know, you were a new viewer and definitely had some good posts. So hope to see you again next time. See you, John.
So we're bleeding people at this point. Oh, wait, hold on. We still Joe has cooked sous vide for all his meals this week. Tonight is tri tip with pause soluble mm. coffee and balsamic. What what that good. what sous vide cooker are you using, Joe? Uh, See, that's what yeah. I've been saying for a while with David. I tried to push that video a long time ago. So you didn't like it. You well. Uh, you can ask Patrick though. I often do a very poor job explaining what's in my head. Like I, like yeah, I tell him things and he's like, hey, "What? Like, come on! It's just see what I'm seeing." We'll have to discuss a little more tomorrow or when we're done here, because um, I think even if we do a tour, I have a different maybe impression of what it'll be than maybe you will. Okay. But no. Well, no, but I think it if should. We do the virtual. I tour, think we should yes. do both. Both. Yes. Yeah. We but should. But I have, do also think there should be an edited. We like, should. Yeah, we should take the time to do a full tour, and we're probably going to have to repeat it every year because maybe even more often because things change around here fairly often. Um, if you don't change, you don't improve. Are we're you always them, making changes. But. Are you wanting them to meet people that they wouldn't normally hear from? No. Okay. No. I didn't think so. <clears throat> so, we're going to do some sort of video tour of the building. We are going to figure out some leather aprons, negotiable on the, the weight or the ounce sure. um, rating of it. Um, and then one last little note that I made is I think we need to do like a special giveaway of like hats and shirts on the next live stream. Sure. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, for anyone who's still here, the hats and shirts that we have coming in, specifically the hats, um, I really think are going to be a good addition. We've got basically that one coming in again, except the white the instead white. of black. Then we've got this coming in again, except this is the mesh is white and the lettering is white. We've got a awesome camo coming in. I'm really excited about that camo. Yeah. And then we've got a, a blue and white with white lettering as well. So it's like kind of Broncos colors a little bit because we have the orange W. Um, well, we're not Broncos <laughs> fans. It still should look really cool. So we've got some good new hats coming in. Like we said earlier, we've got the burnt orange and these shirts coming in again. Same logo, same everything. We really like the Meet Just Six logo. Uh, same basic look on the back. Um, but yeah, so we're super excited about that. And I think that's a good idea. Maybe even have a, a couple of winners on the next yeah. live stream, a couple of hats. Couple yeah, of yeah cool. for sure. Cool. So Joe said he's got the Anova Pro. I just curious because I've tried to get sous vide cookers from some of the bigger name brands out there. And cool. um, actually, yeah, I, I talked to Jewel. Yeah. Um, they were actually really excited. Um, I talked to him and it, I don't know if the, at the time, like when I talked to him, it's been a couple of years. I don't know if anybody had talked to him about doing like a distributorship because they were yeah. excited. They were like, whoa, they're like, yeah, that'd be awesome. They're like, but we only sell direct. Yeah. So I'm like, okay, well, if you ever change your mind, let me know. Um, I've talked to, I think, Anova. Um, I've talked to a couple others, um, most people, can't do much. For some reason, the market's weird. Um, however, Weston is coming out with one. Eventually. Um, they How claim. Long are we for this? Yeah, I know. It's been a while. Um, they claim the last update I got, it should be spring, summer here. Um, it should be finally available fairly soon. Yeah. Um, but the only sous vide cooker we have had so far is really cool. I like it. It works well when you're doing like big things or small things. It, the problem is well, that the price. It it does well with small things, but it's not a small unit. Right. It's not for a small it's not deal. For that. Yeah. If you want to do, do like a great job on a small unit, but yeah, it's priced for larger ones. The one we have will do what? Thirty. Thirty liters. Thirty liters. You can like put it in like one of our meat lugs, which are huge. You could do like yep. ten racks of ribs yep. in the thing. It's ridiculous. Um, but it's it is great, but priced at like two hundred. Yeah, it's like two hundred twenty bucks, yeah. two hundred thirty bucks. But um, the Weston one, it's gonna be small. Yep. It'll be one of the ones you can like put just like in a pot. Yep. I'm super pumped for it. And when we first got that, I resisted it 
heavily because I'm a huge proponent of reverse searing on a steak. But you can't make the argument that sous vide a steak isn't a better way to go. I mean, you literally you can't mess it up. I like my steaks r on the rare side of medium rare. I set my sous vide cooker for 100, and, well, I set the sous vide cooker I take from here home at uh, 125 degrees, leave it in there for a couple hours, take it out, throw it in a screaming hot pan, a minute and a half aside, and it is perfect. Got that little bit of crust, and it is like a millimeter, two millimeters thick of that crust, and it's perfect pink throughout the rest. It's just, you cut it with your fork, basically. So. It moves when you cut it, <laughs> but you know. So speaking of our leather aprons, why yeah. don't we just buy them and then get a W made and just brand them ourselves? I don't want to have to go through that. What, is it going to be 20? What, how many would we buy initially? I don't know. I mean, like 20 people on here were, were like, I'd buy one, I'd buy one, I'd buy one. Yeah. I'm right. thinking I'm going to buy like 50 to start and see how they go. One size? Well, yeah. There's only like normally one size of aprons. Yeah, yeah. Um, you get like straps right. in like the, the top, right, whatever, to make it. that's long enough. So if you're a, if you're a small, it's kind of big. If you're a 3XL, you know it fits. Yeah. But okay. sizes yeah, on aprons is cool. difficult. See, I just got another, I'll buy one. <laughs> you know, when, when, when I get leather aprons and no one buys one, I'm going to come back on the next, next live stream and... Uh, <laughs> just yell just, at oh, everybody. Yeah. Give You'll people see hell. angry Austin. Um, so, Joe, I agree with you there. We did uh, a bunch of chicken breast sous vide, um, and even finishing it up in a pan, I did not like it. It is not the right texture. It is... Chicken breast, chicken thighs, way better on the grill or in a smoker. It's just, I don't know. Yeah, it was kind of gross. <laughs> Joe's got a home-built sous vide that'll do 20 <laughs> gallons. I don't think I want to know. Like, that sounds dangerous. It like, you're just sticking, dangerous. like, a raw heating <laughs> element down into a bucket of water. You're going, no, let's just, he just let's get this up to town. He drops toasters in there. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, Steve, mm. yeah, they are going to be really similar to the hats we have on. Like we said, just uh, white where it's black now and some slightly different colors on the side on this one. That one's the exact same. Are you dead? You're dying. Oh. I'm going to tell them we're thinking about it. It's another thing. Sure. Ask yeah. Public opinion. Um, how many people do we have on here? Like 70. We have less oh. than before. We had, to, we had over we 200. Should we should have asked earlier. We should have asked that. Yeah. So Austin and I have been kicking around an idea uh, for months now. We haven't actually done it uh we were thinking about putting out uh some form of podcast so it'd be two different things kind of we would take the audio from definitely all the meat logistics university stuff or at least the ones that would work with just audio uh, and make a podcast format out of that i don't know that there's an audience for it though um and then the other thing we were talking about doing is a podcast where we talk about the seasonings, what it goes well with. So there would be like one episode specifically on like bratwurst seasoning, or maybe multiple episodes on like a bratwurst seasoning. And that would be more us sitting around in a setting similar to this, having a few drinks, eating some stuff, tasting, talking about it, our thoughts on it. But we don't want to go through the effort of doing it if there's not an audience for it. Um, obviously, it sounds like a weird thing to, to ask, but be honest about it. If it's not something you think you'd be interested in, then we're not interested in doing it. Um, but if you are interested, we definitely would be willing and interested in doing it. It'd be slightly different in that we, instead of sitting up here and in, in like kind of 
fielding questions, answering things, um, we would come up with our own agenda. Um, we could take requests ahead of time. Right, but we wouldn't be but, doing it live. Yeah, it wouldn't yeah. be live. So would you guys be interested in listening to a podcast where maybe a couple weeks beforehand we field questions, field ideas, and then um, it's going to be more static content. But um, is that something that you would be interested in or just not at all? If you guys are, either leave a comment, um, go on Meet Justics and uh, let us know there. But um, kind of a new platform we're considering at this point. Um, if it is something you would say is good or bad, let us know. Ultimately, everything we do is kind of determinant based upon what you guys want. So yep. if it's something you guys want, we'll do it. If it's not, then we won't. Yeah. So Rager went to a charcuterie class at North Carolina State. Said he wore his hat there and got some compliments on it. Really? <coughs> yeah. That's pretty cool. Well, yeah, I've got dogs that are probably chewing holes in doors. You've got a baby. Yeah, you want to wrap this yeah. up? Well, thanks everybody for watching. Um, appreciate it. Uh, last hour and a half has been fun for sure. I, Hopefully, all you guys enjoyed it. We gave away uh, uh, a lot. two things a that lot. worth a lot of money. <laughs> Hopefully, everybody's excited at least to be in the running for something. Um, but we will uh, let you know when we do our next one. Um, we'll uh, keep doing the live streams, keep doing the giveaways, um, keep everybody excited. If you ever have any comments, questions, things you want to see us do, let us know. Yep. But today was fun. Absolutely. I can never believe that it takes, that it's been as long as it has been. These fly by. They go so fast. Even that first one we did that was like four hours. Four or five hours, yeah. We are doing that again, by the way. We are doing that again. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. On uh, Big, Big Monday. Monday. Yeah. Cyber Monday. I'm good with Big that. Big Monday. Good with that. All right, guys. Have a good one. Thanks, everybody. Now, to close it, do you do it up there or do you do it in the live? No. Okay, you need to get on.